Welcome to the Daily Examiner. My name is Elliot Ikile. I wanted to just jump on board, have a real quick discussion on some really important topics that have been coming up, especially recently. And I, I think there's some shocking elements and there's also some parts which are actually hopeful for us. So I want to say thank you for coming in and, and joining me here tonight. We've got our little parts, of course, in terms of any questions that you want to have throw them up really good to see some guys already in there joe sanderson good evening good to see you there as well gordy good to see you cheers 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 uh we've also got uh gordy mitchell cool song oh i wish i could say that it was mine uh, kate very good welcome what's the intro music hey hey takes me ages to to source some of these things uh i i do love that one <laughs> i'll figure out figure out where it's from anyway but you know i, I hunted around anyway uh, Kieran Kieran's on our YouTube. Kia ora, kia ora Kieran. Good to see you there anyway. So what happened today? Well, of course, today was quite a bit of a shock. It was something that we we have been talking about a lot over the last, mm, since I guess 2015, 14, 15, 16, 14, 15 a lot, uh, talking about the attack of the institutions onto our children and the childhood innocence that there is we know that it's been going on we've been detailing what's been going on and we've been seeing some concerning things coming out in 2020 you had the new zealand first tracy martin coming out and she was very happy that the gender ideology that was promised by the labor party that that was to be implemented in 2020 of course as you know 
the lockdown shut down a great deal of things that included this pure form of gender ideology being delivered to your children and then as of this year it's just been funneling through so if you are seeing even down to your five and six year old children you will start seeing them have have seemingly innocuous or seemingly mm, benign sort of pictures that somehow accidentally have transgender flag colors or lgbtqia plus flag colors it will seem like it's just accidental that it's beautiful colors but in actual fact we've discovered that it's not anyway what we found today was quite a shock that this came from Bob McCoskery. We were able to, to confirm some of the sources around it. And what we found was, as you'd expect, absolutely shocking. I'm going to bring it up for you here. Now, this is today. All right, this is today. Shocking. New Zealand sex education for 11 to 12-year-old children. 11 to 12-year-old children. Keep that in mind. All right, and what we're looking at there is a New Zealand school resource. This came back to a mum. She was absolutely shocked. All right, now let's bring this up here. All right, this is just one element of it. How is sex done? Okay, there are five different styles of this area going on. Genital, penis, vaginal penetration. Digital, sexually pleasuring someone with your hand feet. Uh, so there's a fetishizing, this is the fetish about hands and feet. Uh, fingers are digits, Latin words, digitus, uh, right? Object, inserting an object, either dildo, sex toy, one of those elements. Uh, oral, pleasuring someone's genitals with your mouth, tongue. See, these are, these are 11 to 12 year olds who are being given graphic sexual descriptions. And you're talking about also 11, 12 year olds who already are starting that journey of hormonal imbalances, which are natural for that body to move into adulthood. And you've got these sorts of areas here, you know, and again, anal, they go on many different aspects to sex, physical act, all of that. And of course, something that we have seen being shoved into our schools more and more and more upon your children, even down to seven, eight years old, uh, is how would gay and lesbian sex work? As said above, there are five different classifications of sex. There are ways of satisfying your same-sex partner if you can communicate your preferences and desires and are honest about what you enjoy. This is given to 11 and 12-year-olds. All right, to 11 and 12 year olds. These are your children. All right, these are the elements that have been given to them when you are not in school, when you are not there to protect them, when you are not there to give it context, to be in a sense discriminatory as to what is age appropriate and what is not. And this is, of course, all within a, an education system that keeps on bleeping on about the ideas of making this age appropriate and they love putting that out there age appropriate it, it's it is absolute filth right it's shocking shocking stuff that's going on in that regard all right the, what is being done is being done and the it's not the origin but it started off in terms of the new zealand curriculum as a promise made by the labor party back in and i believe it was the 1st of August of 2017, I think it was. Uh, and that's when the Labour Party made a big, big promise that they were going to make the LGBTQIA plus ideology to be putting that into public schooling. After that, when the 2020 hit, that's also when the pure reform came in. So I, I am. I'm really proud that I was part of the team who were able to expose that Mates and Dates program was the first inset of gender ideology into the New Zealand system. And that came out and that was purported to be a an anti-bullying program. But of course, it didn't really focus on fat, skinny, black, white. It didn't focus on any of that. It was very specific where it was strongly focused on LGBTQIA+. And then it uh, started to engage your children into role-playing. You know, and so those kids were very highly, mm, I suppose, arguably desensitized on one, inculcated on the other side. Right, the pure form, the one that shocked even myself and my crew, was the 2020 vision. And the 2020 vision, again, something which I, I do bring up from time to time, uh, something that I want to bring up here as well is, is we have seen the, the shocking indoctrination. And I'm going to use that word indoctrination because I think we are, we are 
enough down the line of the Labour Party to be able to say that it is indoctrination without it sounding like a a tinfoil hat sort of job. All right, so that's where we're at. And I want to talk about more, but I can see a great deal of comments coming up. Yep, absolutely. Diane, up to parents not at schools. Yes, you, you are correct. There is a lot of power that parents do have. It is still not going away. And I can tell you this, overseas... In the United Kingdom, where this has been done for over 10 years, and where they've actually had a five and a half, roughly five and a half thousand percent increase in children as young as four years old seeking du- double mastectomies, penis removal, puberty blockers, they've had that been going on for just over 10 years. Now they've realized how bad it is. The parents have risen up. Now Tavistock Clinic has been shut down. Now there is, as we speak right now, there is just a class action lawsuit of around about a thousand parents uh, have been gathering together in order to sue that clinic because they have, of course, advised that puberty blockers are actually uh, possibly swelling the brain, that it is not scientific in terms of uh, sustainable health, that it's not, it, we don't know what it's doing to the kids long term or medium term, uh, so it's really, really dangerous, all right? Uh, Kelly Humphrey has put in there whoever has written this and approved it needs to be removed from child education yes I I believe so Uh, and don't forget that this is a very strong promise made to the LGBTQIA plus community I do apologize you'll you'll hear my own children in the background there looks like they're having a meltdown that's fine that's fine see that's normal Huh? That's normal and human in fact I'm I'm expecting that they might come in at any point saying uh, someone did this Yes, Gordy. Gordy has said yes. My ten-year-old says that they have been having these talks at school. You're absolutely right. Look, I've been again. I've been a little bit like a broken record on this. You know, one of my neighbors is a great lady. She's uh, she's a cop, and and you know, I, I would talk to her about this, and she would be uh, a bit dismissive, bit dismissive. And then she came to me. I think it was about a year ago, and said, uh, okay. and she's been texting me lately as well. My child's coming home with this. Can you please tell me what's going on? What's up? Because and by the way, the child of hers is about seven, eight years old. Your children are being groomed, and I'm not necessarily saying in a sexual manner, but they are absolutely being groomed to question their very sexuality and to question their very gender. Am I a boy? Am I a girl? What is this? all this other stuff? All right. And I have to say... Even on the outset, it doesn't actually quite make sense because if you're thinking, well, LGBTQIA+, if you are, if you are, if you are in the terms of, of a homosexual relationship, cool, whatever, that's your buzz. What's that got to do with kids? What on earth does it have to do with children or childhood? It ain't got nothing to do with it whatsoever. So you should be nose out of that. That area belongs to families. That, that area belongs to the parents of children, the grandparents of children, the caregivers. All right, so it's, it's incredibly important. Brian has brought up that is insane. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Karen has gone in there. What the actual? Hmm? Just no, way too young. Stand up parents, grandparents, far no to stop, time to stop this. Karen, you're absolutely right. And, and again, so, something I was saying just before is that we are seeing in the US and in the UK that families who are very late to the party have at least stepped up. And what is really awesome, really awesome, is that they have gone into mama beer and daddy beer mode hard. I can tell you that I've been watching a great deal of clips and also having a bit of a chat with some of our people over in those areas. They are rising up because when they have realized that it is their children, when it is your children who are being inculcated by teachers who either willingly or unknowingly are actually forcing or pushing this gender ideology and sexualization of education upon their young minds, young undeveloped minds, that they are not really their children anymore, that they are being taken by a an ideology that is not of their parents' making. So you, you're absolutely right. It is time for the parents to stand up. And I can tell you, you've got a lot of power. You've got more power than you think. It is not a situation of, you know, where do we put our vote, that sort of area. You've got a lot of power. 
And, and I'm going to tell you what a couple of principals have actually told me very soon about that. Uh, so Chrissy has popped in there. Who do they think they are? It's not their job or place to be teaching that to the schools. They are not the parents. That's a massive thing. Please keep that in mind. They are not the parents. And can I can I reiterate as well? The school that you remember, even if you are in your early 20s, the school that you remember is no longer that school. I used to do as little as, or as late as 2019-ish, 20, mm, 2019 mostly, and uh, before that, already I was seen in the libraries, in the secondary school libraries, instead of adventure books, science fiction, romance novels, all that sort of stuff, instead I was seen in the featured books, very much LGBTQI+. Plus. Just, just pushed in there. If you go to Wickles, it's all in the face in there as well. And again, we have to do this because there's a, a, a disclaimer that you have to do, which is this. You know, if you're gay, whatever. It's your buzz. Just don't make it our kids' buzz. Step off. And that's something which we need to be able to say without feeling like recriminations or anything like that. Karen has come in again. Uh, school is for education, not this BS as for the parents to educate. Yeah, that's right. You are the family, you are the caregivers, you are the parents. Your worldview is to be given to the children, not the schools. And if you want to talk about, oh, well, you know, you're indoctrinating them in Christianity or Islam or, or you're indoctrinating them in heterosexuality. Yeah, cool. That's fine. They're your kids. They are not the LGBTQIA plus community's kids. They're not. They're your kids. All right. And it's not a war against anyone. I think probably it is a bit of a war against probably the activists, actually. It probably is there. I can tell you, and I've done a couple of essays on this recently. I'll see if I can drag it back up again. But the end goal, your children are merely a milestone on that end goal. The end goal, by the quotes and by the assertions of the activists themselves, is not the children per se, but the children are a late game goal. The end goal is nothing less than the abolition of the family unit. The dissolution, the, to dissolve the family unit overall. It is to dissolve the family unit. That's what it is for. That's the, that's the end goal. Now, obviously, for those of us who do believe in family, the nuclear family, the idea of mum, dad, kids, what we are looking at, obviously, is if they do get that, then our society is destructed, will be deconstructed swiftly after that because the building blocks of every community is the family unit. It is the building blocks. If you've got a strong, uh, if you've got a strong society, that is because you have a strong family unit. If you have a weak, deconstructing, uh, vicious, horrific, brutal society, that is because you have a weak family unit. That's, that is how it goes. If you want to look at anthropological sort of areas and ideas, that's the big one there. All right. Uh, Jonathan. Jonathan's come in there. Uh, Paiaha. Oh, what's the topic? Topic is, of course, the attack on childhood innocence. We, of course, just to remind you uh, that we were able to source the material from one area. A, a very good parent has come on board. Uh, yes, yes, we do. We are aware of which school it is. Bob McCoskey was also in the middle of that. Uh, he was he was uh, engaging with the principal of that school. They've been looking at the documentation around it. But this was already coming on. All right. I mean, again, look at this. It is absolutely disgusting. All right. This is, as far as I'm concerned, this is not appropriate for secondary school. Let alone, this is not appropriate for secondary school. Let alone. Let alone as 12, 11, 12 year olds who are already struggling with puberty, changes in their life, hormones that are going out of, out of whack, uh, decide, oh my gosh, there's some different feelings that they have with boys and girls and everything. All right. Uh, and just to let you know that, yes, Bob McCossey is, he has said, please know that we are getting legal advice on the material above and we'll be making formal complaints with both the Minister of Education and possibly uh possibly the new zealand police so this is what's going on it's, it's absolutely shocking yes we do know it uh, the if you look hard enough you'll be able to find this particular school the reason why one of the reasons why we we, we didn't want to specify the school itself as well is because every single or every single public school must be embedding their their program like this 
all right it, it's that's how bad it is that's that is what you are talking about all right uh and, and i want to say there have been some good things that have been coming out now all right uh you've got this situation here because tavistock tavistock is a united kingdom that was uh, a great deal doing a lot of uh, treatments for trans children children giving them what they refer to as gender gender affirming surgery that was cutting off penis that was doubles mastectomies that's puberty blockers that's uh, uh skin grafts on for different parts of the body absolutely disgraceful stuff um just to let it hear in a significant development the, the tavistock general it is to be shut down well it is shut down all right uh in fact not only that there is the the entire group of parents and and uh, ex clients who are now gathering together to sue them right look, have a look at this have a look at this by the way i want to tell you this is happening here in new zealand right uh, puberty halting drugs can harm a patient's brain and bone development medics are failing to warn about the infertility risks posed by puberty blockers children who regret treatment find themselves locked into new bodies absolutely if they split the penis they're not getting it back and the disgusting way in which the the clinic the clinicians are actually trying to push the children into these is is horrific utterly horrific uh, internet sites persuade autistic children they are transgender when they simply have identity issues okay and and let's let's not forget that well over 90 percent of these children actually or previously to the gender ideology now being shoved on your children previously that almost all of these kids actually went into line by the time they left puberty by the time they left school they were more they were in line with their their biological gender all right so if they had identity issues and look we all know teenagers do we all know as teenagers we did as well we had struggles you know attraction uh, how do i look how do I feel about my body? How do I, how about my anger, emotions, riches? You know what I look like to others, and then even to complicate that even further, uh, to say, well, you're not a boy or a girl, but you can be anything on any day, and it's a splitted spectrum. Very dangerous, it really is. And in New Zealand, it's here. So in in 2014, 15, 16, when I was, you know, like a broken record trying to say, warn people about it. It was coming over, it's coming over, it's coming over. Uh, now it is no longer coming over. It is, it's here. It's here now. It is not just here, but it is now taxpayer funded. So you fund it and it is now being pushed into your schools. And not only that, it's actually embedded. All right. So, you know, what do I mean by embedded? Uh, well, it's in, it's in your it is in your classrooms all right so i want to, i'm going to bring up a, a couple of elements here now this is the current this is what's currently in our schools all right so this is part of the ministry of education documentation uh, that we that we do have okay so i'm going to i'm going to bring it up all right and i'm hoping hoping this comes up all right it does uh this is now this is my ministry of education documentation okay keep that in mind this is Ministry of Education documentation. Transgender, the term describes a wide variety of people whose gender uh, is different from the sex they were assigned at birth. Already, already put yourself, can I just point out, this is not, this book uh, or this Ministry of Education document is in from primary school. From primary school. It's not in secondary or not just in secondary, it's in primary school. Uh, transgender, transgender people may be binary or non-binary and some opt for some form of medical uh, intervention. All right uh, so that's that's one element that they have there okay this is another area here uh, sex assigned at birth okay Th these are the woke words i want to reiterate what you're looking at here on your screen is the ministry of education glossary okay this is this is what they are using currently this is not this is not some whack job stuff this is uh, well okay well it is but it's in the ministry of education sex assigned at birth right you, you, the, you know that that's where they're starting to change the language uh, change those areas there all right heteronormativity okay all right let's put this up here a bit sorry heteronormativity the assumption that heterosexuality is the default or normal 
and both in quote marks, sexual orientation rather than being just one of many possibilities. Okay, heterosexual, a person who is sexually attracted to people of the other binary gender. What? What does that mean? What? You know, crazy words, All right? Uh, homophobia and irrational negative response to or fear of people who are homosexual, transgender, bisexual, or otherwise gender and sexually diverse. Such phobias may manifest discrimination or violence. All right, and, and again, that is that that element around trying to make uh, this came this strategy, this tactic actually was born out of the after the ball book during the 80s which was done by a, a very prominent neurologist and, sorry neuroscientists and a public relations uh, team up they the idea was to make it so that homosexuality would become part of mainstream society very much very effective uh, one of the terms of course was that to uh, to always make sure that homosexuals were the victim and if they can create the narrative that homosexuals are always the victim then they are able to have the straights as they referred to heterosexual people they referred to them as straights uh, the idea would be that the straights would then feel compelled to protect them because there is a natural protective area around straights that was how the book termed it uh, quite shocking all right uh, now all right, so this area here, this is one of the uh, outloading outcomes that you're seeing here. Okay, now by the way, this is now, if I remember correctly, this is actually the learning outcomes for seven and eight year olds. Not 11, 12 year olds, seven and eight year olds. Are able to identify gender stereotypes, whatever that means. Understand the difference between gender and sex. And know that there are diverse gender and sexual identities in society. Have a look at that. That is the Ministry of Education documentation. It is public. It is online. It's not hidden. It is right there and it's aimed directly at your children. This one is specifically for seven and eight year olds. Are able to identify gender stereotypes. Understand the difference between gender and sex. Seven and eight year olds. And know that there are diverse gender and sexual identities in society. What the hell are you teaching our children that they would need to know about anything around gender and sexual identities in society? Children in that regard simply need to be tolerant and respectful of all people. And you see, you don't see anything around, oh, well, too fat, too skinny, too poor, too rich, white, black, brown, yellow. All of that's gone. It's very specifically pushing around the LGBTQIA plus ideology. It has been shoved upon your children. It is a late game, not end goal, but it is late game goal. All right. And the last one sort of that, I'll, I'll, well, able to, co uh, to contribute and follow guidelines that support inclusive environments in the classroom and school. That's, that's what that also says as well. All right. Are able to contribute and uh, are able to contribute to and follow guidelines that support inclusive environments in the classroom and school. Do you know what's missing there? Able to disagree, able to challenge, able to confront, able to have a discourse, able to engage in free speech. On it, no. Are able to contribute and follow guidelines. To follow guidelines that support inclusive, what they refer to as inclusive environments in the classroom and school okay i want to be clear about that that's a ministry of education document for your children all right it was implemented in 2020 but it was properly implemented when the lockdowns finished and so this year it's it's just it's all it's all gunning hard you know and, and it's yeah, it's, it's absolutely disgusting. It really is. Uh, Christina, have you heard about the world? Have you heard about how the world is starting to normalize maps to be included in LGBTQ? Maps are minor attracted persons, aka pedophiles, evil. Yes, that's, that, that is correct, Christina. Uh, yes, and, and in actual fact, over in the US, a lot of the teachers there who have been pushing the gender ideology and have been proudly pushing it are, in fact, now starting to be seen to have mucked around with children, to engage in heavy child porn, to be actually found to have been sexually assaulting very very young children 
you know, it, it's it's quite disgusting what's starting to go off there. Stuff that we were expecting anyway, to be fair. You know, and they, there's this real strong push. Ah, oh, you know, the, the churches. Churches are full of pedophiles and stuff like that. It's, well, actually, even the person... Even the the journalist who was who was the main expert in terms of church sexual assaults upon young people and children has actually said that children are actually more at risk in a school than a church, and that was always that was always a real fascinating one for me to hear. You know, uh, <clears throat> Laureen has said, "What what is the end game? Why little children and parents need to start fighting this?" Yes. Yes, Lorraine, the, the, the children aren't the end game themselves. They are the, a late game. The end game, of course, is the abolition of the family unit to remove, to dissolve the family unit itself so that a family is, is nothing more than a, a partial caretaker until the child can choose their own gender. Uh, the, there is also very tightly, a tight, uh, a very close relationship between the gender ideology and also Marxism that we see being pushed more and more in terms of New Zealand, the Labour Party, very strongly Marxist, very strongly socialist, I would argue maybe a little bit more than socialist. As I have said before, I think that New Zealand is more of a fascist society currently, and that's because we're not really socialist or communist yet, but fascism, of course, is the idea that everyone agrees with the government, or that that is the sense, that whatever the government is, that they believe that what they're doing is for the good of the government. Uh, and the idea in fascism, of course, is that you, you engage in socialistic policies, but you also do whittle down a bit of the free speech. Um, and, and that's where that area goes in. So the idea of fascism as well is that it's not like socialism where you take hold of all the means of production rather within, within fascism you you have very close relationships with very big businesses and the rest of of the areas get highly regulated to the point where it's very difficult to engage in any decent profit area uh, and therefore that's that's your sort of angle you don't take over full means of production rather you you grow the government to be bigger you have a few strong strong relationships with big business and we did see that also during the lockdowns and of course you start to cut down your free speech a bit uh, and also there's a, a cultural sense that whatever you're doing has been agreed to by the populace and, and perhaps that is why Miss Ardern seems sometimes confused as to why people are protesting her why she's doing so badly in the polls and and why she's struggling uh, politically speaking so I think that was you know absolutely shocking um so we've got karen here yes right i'm looking into homeschooling with my mokos they are not learning this crap not on my watch well said i can tell you there's been a massive spike in uh in home edu home education uh, interest and also uh discussions and pushing for it to the point where schools are being encouraged now to really solidly go out there and try to retain their their students which is quite fascinating uh, Lauren Tate, we need to make a standard appearance to find out what is being taught at school. I'm asking my kids every day now just what was taught today. Lauren, well done, good on you, absolutely right. Uh, I can tell you as well that you have the right. So, parents, right, what do we got? So, parents, you have the absolute right to go in there. Now, there's there's two ones. Now, I've spoken to a few principals, and I've also spoken to some board members and some a couple of board chairmen about this. So, I uh, I am a parent. I'm a parent of a ten. Oh, sorry, a parent of a, an eleven-year-old, and I'm also a parent of a five-year-old, and and so this really does concern all of us and, and myself a great deal. If you are a parent, you have the right to be able to go to the school and and effectively demand, respectfully request knowledge as to what's going on in their their sex programs, to know what's going on in their in their uh, resources. You have that right as a parent. You've got that right. Mm. The changes, so you've got that right, and you can actually have your child removed. The, now, the, now here's where it gets a bit messy. I think some of that stuff's actually pretty good, pretty okay, age appropriate, and stuff that was tried and true. You know, Harold the giraffe wasn't so lethal back then. You know, if, if we could engage in that a little bit more, that would be okay. Where the tough element comes, where where the tough stuff comes, is the embedded element. That's where it becomes a little bit tougher. Because 
the two well actually i guess you've got three areas one of the mates and dates program that is from year nine i think or year, i think it's year nine in the health component now of course your children at that stage are teenagers and they're going to want to rebel because that is a natural human element so you but you can go gather a group of your of parents together and actually start to really engage in some activism and, and go to the go to the school uh, respectfully and politely demand that they actually shut those programs down now that the issue with the mates and dates program is that it is taxpayer funded meaning that for schools they don't have to pay out of their operational budget for it that's where it gets complicated but at the very least you could at least get your kids to be outside of that or even to talk about that health curriculum that's there at least make it visible sunlight is the best best disinfectant as they say the the sex education that is for children when they start to say well we're not talking about sex education we're talking about body parts uh we're talking about you know uh, instead of saying oh this is my vajayjay you know they might learn in a more age-appropriate way what is a, a vagina now those elements i'm i'm tentatively tentatively sort of okay-ish with now i'm still meeting with them and i'm still going through the the teaching stuff where i am where, where my kids are on that area but those two elements, one of those elements, mates and dates, is easy enough to either get rid of or not get rid of. The uh, sexual edu- or the sex education, even down to the very young ones, uh, which is not dodgy, but rather it's maybe a little bit confronting, but not necessarily dodgy. That's not as bad. The horrific stuff, the stuff which is actually pushing your child to to question their very sexuality and their sexual gender, uh, and to to get twisted up in this. That's actually the hard stuff. And it's hard because it's what you call embedded learning. And embedded learning means that it's put into English lessons, creative writing. You might be, well, okay, uh, hey guys, uh, as a nine-year-old, let's say that you're, and I'm I'm trying to paraphrase here because I actually found a resource given to nine-year-olds and it was... uh, a a teenage girl was having sex with a boy but she had sexual feelings for a girl a friend girl that she was with and so she wasn't sure she came from a broken home and they they started to twist and turn and found out that her parent was having an affair with someone billy billy's dad from down the street and and it really messed up and i was thinking man if you're an adult that would actually be quite twisted i'll see if i can find that resource but it was quite a quite a really why would you be giving that to nine-year-olds those are embedded and and that's where they want to bring up any form of discussion so they might put in creative learning or uh, creative sorry creative story writing Uh, like i said i've seen some artwork where it's been very specifically the lgbtqia plus flag and they just keep on shoving it shoving it shoving it so that eventually you look at the you look at those colors and go oh wow that's quite nice you know so that's the embedded part and the embedded part is actually difficult it's very difficult i'm i've gotten bob on this show before maybe it would be good to get him on again or maybe it would be good to get a teacher on who's been going through some of the stuff or sorry or has gone through the stuff and come out because i I do know of a few of them uh lynn lynn's come up do you have the right to approach any school to find out what they are teaching there are four schools in my small town only one is attended by my family my little seven year old great grandson lynn yes yes you do have the right you do have the absolute right to go into your school and and actually demand what is being taught my strong encouragement is is if you can get together with other parents and then go in there as a solid block all right and that's way that way you can engage in writing and you've got a bit of a community growing on parents do have a lot of power still the the labor party and look you know what the national party as much as i really have a great deal of respect for some of them they they knew about this i was feeding some of them this a lot and they did nothing they did nothing to fix any of this or to challenge it or to take it out uh the really uh, they really really did so uh, in terms of the embedded stuff my strongest suggestion would be get together with your groups you you all know people from other from other the parent groups get together with them you know hey look i have i've already gone around the country and spoken to many different groups about this Mm, not myself but because of my team's doing on on a lot of the stuff, I believe six different schools actually stopped 
mates and dates program around New Zealand, and that's a that's a wonderful thing. So that and that was from the the information that my team gave to them. You know, it, it can be done. All right, it can be done. And the more more of us who solidify together to defend our children, and I tell you what, in the in the US they are standing up, and in the UK they are standing up. All right, the parents are as the parents have realised, my children are now having great deals of mental anguish and pain and struggle because they uh, instead of now just worrying about oh this one hit me uh, or I'm feeling funny feelings about this girl or this boy instead of that now they are questioning their very the the one the one of the things that they should be secure in which is I'm a boy I'm a girl tom girls or sorry tom boys are generally not girls trapped in boy body or, or other way around all right there's, and i'll tell you this there's no scientific there's nothing scientific around there i can tell you this as well and again i do not i do not uh, uh i don't hold myself as being any great deal at all in the debating chamber but i've been able to debate with pretty much everyone so far and they don't have a leg to stand on scientifically speaking they really really don't uh, i've gone on at um professors so who was the last professor I was with? Uh, professor Spoonley. Um, I've also a couple of other professors, uh, a couple of drag queens, mm, a lot of politicians, and you know, we've been able to shut them down. Not not because I'm any good. I want to point that out. Not because I'm any good, but merely because the science is the truth of what is going on, and the science does not back shoving puberty blockers into children. And the Tavistock Clinic shutdown is is shockingly bad for those who are trying to shove it down the throats of our kids all right um so i'm just having a look around here susan thank you for speaking up against this phil thank you susan uh, i appreciate it there um now i'm oh cool we've uh so susan's also gone in there all grooming for pedophilia yes there is a lot of grooming going on in, in that regard uh and, th and that again is quite shocking uh now Jonathan's gone there. Uh, do you not have the one person you're schooling that wasn't in the right body? I know a couple that fit that demographic, and it was so sad to see one in a mental health ward and another one was allowed to follow their path. I'm in Christchurch and await your response from last elections. Lol, you're trying to skirt around the facts. Okay, I think I think he's. Uh, I think Jonathan's. Uh, okay, I, I'm not sure if this is going to answer your question, Jonathan, but I'm going to try to try to get it if i think uh, so in my time as over youth work for over 20 years uh, sorry for for about 20 years um, i work with probably around about 30 30 ish transgender kids um, age between um, 15 16 and probably the oldest that i worked with would have been 20 1920 so that would have probably been the ones who i worked with most uh, loved every single one of those kids those kids were awesome absolutely awesome i i really loved the time that I spent with them. They also knew exactly that, that I followed science and, and that they knew that, you know, male, male, female, female, but that I loved them anyway. They knew that. Uh, I was working with them. They were they were what we would regard as high-risk or at-risk youth at the time. Um, and, yeah, I, I really enjoyed working alongside them and just hopefully giving them some tools in which to become uh, uh, strong, productive. I know that a few of them, I've seen them since. Um, if I might admit a little bit of a concern or, or a fear that I have, which has probably happened anyway, but, but it's not something I really like to think about too much because I, I do, I have a lot of love of those kids, but a fear that I have, of course, is that those kids will see uh, see how I how I do say, you know, man, man, female, man, uh, that a, a woman is a adult human female and a man is a human adult male and that they might think that I, I don't like them for whatever reason. It's but in saying that I've, I've met up with a few of them since and and they just laugh at me and they go oh, sir sir why do you keep saying that stuff sir uh, but they say it in a way that that suggests that they they still know that i love them and all that sort of stuff so uh, so i believe that that for our transgender kids our kids who are struggling with their uh, identity that we should be we should be looking after them in schools you've got wire you've got youth workers in, in uh, schools you've got counselors you've got the ability to engage in in stronger psychological uh, or psycho uh, uh, psycho psychology or psychiatry you've got the ability to be go, able to go in there and look after these kids uh, in an individual way what you should not be doing is making a blanket pushing onto children in order for them to to suddenly think that oh well, well I'm a tomboy maybe I'm actually a male that does 
a great deal of damage to children and again like i said overseas are starting to wake up to that fact slowly but surely uh, and now there's going to be a lot of of kickback on that new zealand needs to as well all right um you, there is none of this born in the wrong body you can have a dysphoria you can be uh you know if you really want to know and and, and please please excuse my ignorance of your own individual situation if this is not you please excuse it i apologize if that is uh, correct but i'm not saying i am not saying that this is for every young person who has uh, transgender or gender issues this gender dysphoria the vast majority and i mean the vast majority of those kids the kids i suppose you can't call them kids but the the young people who i worked with who had gender issues very interestingly i saw two patterns this is just my experience one was a very strong sexual abuse and specifically very very young so not the not the six seven eight year olds and up but more those uh, two three four five year olds so that's where i've seen that's one pattern the other pattern is um outside of the never or not the oldest and not the youngest but rather a middle child type so those are the two patterns that i've that i've seen that I've seen that's in my own practice of when I've been engaging with them so that that's what I have seen but you know the idea is you treat everyone with compassion and tolerance what you don't do is 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 force the society or the community or the schooling or the children to be obedient to the ideological delusion of what that is and, and I think that's actually something which is really 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 important um pay pay qt is uh, written out there we need to speak into their lives our words frame the way they view themselves oh well said well said also well said uh, let's tell our children they are loved we are proud of them highly favored and so on yeah absolutely sharks you all right absolutely you've got to give you look you know my i don't know if they thought they were a flower but you know uh, uh one of my kids thought that they were a flower every now and then it's cool i don't care but that doesn't mean that i'm going to start just watering water on them and start feeding them with some fertilizer once a month and then make sure that they're in a in a dry place during winter it's idiotic you don't you don't obey a delusion you assist and one that keeps on coming up is is uh anorexia and anorexic who truly believes that they are fat and that they need to exercise they need to drink more water and eat less food and they will shrivel down to 45, 43, 40 kilograms, and they'll die because of anorexia. We don't put them on a treadmill. We don't actually obey what their thought processes say they are. We don't, we don't obey that. All right? we, get them, we get them direct individual assistance and help. We counsel them. And usually, usually, and I do mean greatly, usually that's, uh, that's psychological. That's bringing out, giving them the ability, a safe place where they can talk about what's really gone on in their lives. And I'll tell you, I'm so grateful to the kids who, who I worked with. Uh, and sometimes there'll be a small group of us uh, until like 6, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, uh, 9 o'clock at night. And, and so I was you know, running the, the, the vocational education programs and you'd have a small group there and they would just talk about their lives. You know, Oh, geez, we got off the topic a bit, but... You know, I, I do, I love those times, you know, when they kept me there in the classroom and they wanted to just give out the, the pain that was really in their hearts of, of things that had happened before. And I'm grateful to every one of them. I'm, I'm humbled by being able to be allowed to share that time with them. Um, and, and they also knew very well that I knew that they were male because most of the time it was a, they put themselves as a female, all right? So, uh, so it's absolutely, you know, absolutely uh so it's absolutely wrong what's been going on with the kids um and and look we've got to stand up all right i only meant to come up here on half an hour but i can tell you that that we've got to stand up and defend our children they don't have anyone else and now you've got to understand we're not going to school they are now under assault they are under ideological assault and even the teachers who don't quite know what they're doing they are complicit in that assault the parents who we will die for them we will die for our children if they are beside us and we're out there somewhere and someone comes for our family we'll die to kill the other 
that other person who's coming to hurt or rape our family. That's easy. But we're working from, uh, look, I wake up at 5.30 in the morning. I'm home maybe, what, 6, 6 ish at night. How many of you out there, also, both parents working, you know, how many times do we have to go to do a double shift? How many times do we have to do a swing shift? How, how, what about the fearful? Where do we put our kids after school? And, and we don't, it's hard for us to, to take on the fact that between the hours of 8.30 and 3 o'clock, that now we have to be worried about that time of all times where we expect our children to be taught math and literacy and science and how to put words together and now we have to worry about them being inculcated with an ideology that is so brutal and horrific to young people that is pornographic in nature that does push into pedophilia and hebophilia we have to worry about that new zealand's a progressive nation and uh, unfortunately, I think that progressivism has led us to some disastrous policies. You know, you, you talk about the housing, the environment, the economic environment, the uh, the crime, the gang membership, the gun deaths, the shootings uh, across the board. Progressivism has made our lives quite miserable. I think we need to really do stand up and, and take action on this. Mm. Uh, Kevin's come up with one is uh, is actually quite good. Uh, when you go to sleep, always monitor what the kids are seeing. Oh, can I <laughs> can I just put on the youth worker hat a little bit there? If your children have a phone and they're allowed it at night, um, they're watching porn. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm just gonna put that out to you. All right, uh, if they if they have a unit, if they have a laptop or or some sort of book, uh, again, I've worked with heaps of kids over the last uh, twenty years. They've got a device. They're watching porn at night. If they're, if they're sleepy and they say, oh, it's because music, I'm listening to music. Oh, bro. Mm-mm-mm. No, they are not. All right. I'm not saying, and I'm not saying all the time. All right. I'm, I'm not going to go there. But uh, most of the time, most of the time it's porn. All right. And and it's not the it's not the porn of the ones that, look, I'm an old guy. All right. I'm an old guy. Uh, it's not the porn that was like in a box. And you used to, we used to sneak out as kids to go read it, you know. Um, it is it is quite brutal like i said i i do investigations and such and, and it's quite horrific i've also got a couple of friends in objectionable materials uh you don't even want to think about what goes on in that environment uh, but your kids they need you to protect them from themselves uh, and now of course from the ideology being put in through the schools i know i i get it i get how hard it is to be able to have to fight in terms of uh, making sure that the schools are not indoctrinating your children i get it all right. Uh, um, for a couple of times during the campaign, I had to work a couple of tro- uh, two jobs. Mm, I was all over the show. All right, I get it. Um, but but I want to say, look, don't don't give up. All right. There's been a couple of times where I'm like, you know, you get so angry, uh, and and there have been a couple of times where I say, uh, you know, bleep this, bro, outs, you know, and just. But the children are worth it. They are our future, you know, uh, and you are worth it as well. Don't think just because you're, hey, we're all old people. Okay, we're not old, fair enough. I'm not old, fair enough. But, you know, you get me. Uh, your parents, you know, you've got the, the greatest job in the world, which is you've got children there. Uh, we've got to protect them. All right. And the thing is, there's a lot of people. Look in the comment section. All right. This is just an impromptu uh, episode that I just pumped up. You know, look at all, all of you guys already engaged in some good, strong discussion, you know. We're, we, if we gather together, we link arms together, we will be just like that Spartan shield war. You know, let them come. Uh, they can't do anything. So I want to say thank you so much for all of you guys out there. Thank you so much for your discourse, your comments in the section. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Thank you for the haters in there as well. Love it. I really do. It's really important that we do have that strong, robust discussion. Uh, you know, um, so I just want to say, look, be strong. Get those links happening. Get those groups happening. If you want me to help out, I'm more than happy to see if I can get around the place where I need to. Mm, again, 2020, I'll be around some wonderful places. But uh, I just want to say thank you so much to every one of you guys. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful that you're on there and on board. 
uh, and we want to make sure that that we can support each other as much as we can so in the meantime god bless you god bless new zealand